Hello my soccer universe! What a great evening it was yesterday. My two favorite teams played one after the other and they scored a total of 11 goals with no goals conceded. This I cannot remember ever having experienced anything like that. But we will not be talking about loss because I'm waiting for the German Cup final before uh, we talk about that game. We'll talk Serie A today. Wearing Milan, I mean, seven goals. Uh, let's go right to it. This is the first time since they beat, I think, Fiorentina 7 2 in the 93 somewhere there that they scored seven. So that's already a biggie in Serie A. Maybe they have in some European competition, but. Uh, any, anyway, and previously they had scored six in 2001 or two when they beat Inter 6 0. I still can't remember seeing that one on the screen and totally excitedly running down the stairs. Milan has won 6 0 against Inter Milan has won. And uh, yeah, my family didn't care all that much about them. I was like, yeah. So, pretty fun stuff there. Uh, but overall, I think the Champions League race is still kind of hot, although I'm feeling relatively calm because I see a clear path for Milan to go there. Uh, yes, Juve won yesterday. If Juve would have lost yesterday, it would have been done and dusted. But I know that Milan has now a home game against Cagliari. Cagliari maybe should have gotten the win to make it a little bit e easier, but Cagliari more or less on the safe side. Um, and I'm really looking at Juve because that's the one where you want to put the uh, distance in. Although, you know, if Napoli loses twice, although I don't quite see that either. Uh, so, yeah. Milan's playing Cagliari. Get a win there, it is done. Inter has to play at, uh, up at Juventus. And I'm sure they want to kind of prove that they are the real champions. And there's such a huge rivalry that I don't think that Inter will let that go. So I'm actually feeling kind of calm that even before the at my wish that before the Atalanta away game uh, Milan is already on the good side and even if there's something to play for it could very well be that a draw for Atalanta and Milan will be just enough and you know Biscotto that's what I am hoping for. Um, the other news of course for uh, Juve where yeah, let's get the unpleasant stuff. Uh, they have been uh, seriously threatened by Serie A. If you don't say goodbye Super League, you're not playing in Serie A any, anymore. So in that case, it might not even matter how where Juve finishes. But I actually, I actually think Juve will come around. Um, I think Juve is in huge disarray at the moment uh, within the team, but also outside influences and so on. Uh, at this moment I even hear that it might not be sure that Agnelli will continue. So uh, there's a lot of damage that has been done publicly on the Juve brand. On the positive side, both Ronaldo and Dybala scored the 100th goal for the old lady and that also means that, um, that your, uh, Ronaldo is the first player ever to score 100 at least 100 goals for three different teams. That I think is a pretty impressive record that we also have to mention. Um, uh, the short community went crazy over the Inter-Roma game because Inter finally played in the fourth jersey, although it was by Serie A standards illegal. And uh, uh, lastly, I think despite Torino losing so badly, uh, Benevento uh, also losing to Atalanta more or less seals their fate as well. I would say briefly in the games. I mean, the Tuesday evening game, Napoli Udine. Uh, I was actually hoping that Napoli slips up, but it was never to be. You know, uh, at, at this moment, uh, it's the end of the season. I, the only thing I care about this at this point at, at the time is that Milan makes in the Champions League. So all my other sympathies slash loyalties or whatever go out, out, out of the window. Milan goes first. That's why I want Na Napoli to uh, slip, slip up. Although I really wouldn't mind if Napoli makes it to the... Champions League and then on the other hand if I think for Italy might not be the best thing given that uh, they're trying to blow the whole thing up which I still don't under, under, uh, understand. Keep Gattuso, keep the squad together. I think you have something good going there. Yes, injuries. It was injuries. 
Really, I think if Napoli would have stayed healthy the entire season, we would be talking about an Inter-Napoli title race. This is how highly I think of Napoli. For that reason, I think they would definitely deserve to go in the, in, into the Champions League. Um, took a while, but then Zielinski and Ruiz within three minutes, especially the Ruiz goal was really nicely taken. Uh, make it two, uh, Neil Na Napoli Okaka pulls on back, but then after the half, pff, Napoli just roll, rolls over. And if you have Oziman in that form, uh, and the whole attack kind of really gelling, they are fun to watch. Lozano, Di Lorenzo and Insigne late on make it a comfortable 5-1 line and a statement. And I think Napoli is kind of likely to win out. Atalanta also uh, not in any way exciting, you know. They have a cup final coming up soonish, so uh, probably saving the uh, energies for that, that as well. But, you know, you play against Benevento, a team that is unfortunately in real big trouble. And so you just need to do, do much to win 2-0 Muriel and Pasalic scoring the goals. As I said, Inter and Roma, this was for the short community, the fourth Inter fourth shirt finally being worn and now it's not only a glorified training top, it is a proper shirt. I have to say I personally don't dislike it, although it is it's a little bit too wild for my taste, but I don't dislike it. I think the colors are well put together. Why was it an illegal shirt? Because Serie A says, yeah, um, there should be only a maximum of three colors on, on the shirt. A fourth one should only be an accent, which got me to think, I think there are five colors on the Roma shirt, even without the numbers. I think there are three different red tones and two orange tones. As far as I can recall, so uh, kind of a little bit, yeah. But maybe you could ar ar argue it's an accent. I wonder which color they argued as an accent for the inter shirt, or they just said, oh, "Okay, I think it's the blue that's the accent." Um, I think it it made it the most colorful matchup that we will see all season, at least in Serie A. But I would even say uh, other leagues as well. And it uh, it the highlights were kind of fun, 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 fun to watch. And Roma is. I think you have to, uh, Roma fans, please enjoy now those last few games under Fonseca. Yes, you're leaking goals on, on the back, but forward, you're playing so nicely. You, uh, It is really a joy, joy to watch. Mourinho comes in, it will be a disaster. I can, I can only foresee disaster, and I really would wish otherwise. Um, so yeah, Roma... Having control of the game, Inter scoring goals. Brozovic, Vecino, Mkhitaryan pulls one back, fully deserved. Then late on, Lukaku makes one. There was also a little bust up because uh, Lautaro Martinez had to come off for Alexis Sanchez in 35th. And then in 77th, he was taken off and Pinamonti was put on and he was not happy about that. And he and Conte uh, went at each other. So rather interesting stuff there as well. Lazio, last gasp win against Parma. Yes, most of the time they were better, but late in the game, Parma had a few really good chance, chances to score their goal, but Lazio scores the one, which just about keeps them in the race for top four. But I think Lazio is done. Uh, they hurt themselves a lot with the loss to uh, the loss that they had last uh, week weekend. Sampdoria playing in red, odd, but you know, uh, didn't look. Bad. I think they had worse churches, but some 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 tour in red always looks a little bit old. But I remember they had this also in the nineties. So, Spezia twice took a lead through uh, twice through Pobega. Uh, Vere uh, equalized in the thirty second for Sampdoria at first. Uh, initially gave him all offside, but it was all fine. And then Keita Balda in the eightieth with a potential handball by Yoshida, but I think it was uh, so poor poor Berlin that they let it go. Uh, Sassuolo Juve. I think all the talk on that one will be the 100 goals for Ronaldo, the 100 goals for Dybala as a second story. Um, to me, the big story is that Sassuolo got a penalty in the 16th minute that was saved by Gigi Buffon, who will actually now leave Juve as, as well. And rumor has, has it is going to Milan, which... Okay. Um, in any case, um, I think that save saved Juventus right there. Because then uh, Chiesa assists Ra Rabiot, who takes a shot from a distance. And Ra Rabiot then to Ronaldo just, just before I makes it 2-0. 
and that kind of settled a little bit, a little bit of nerves because this was a game that I could very well see Juve leaving, given how well Sassuolo has been playing. Then on the other side, Juve didn't really show up to play on Suns, on, on Suns, so they probably were much fresher than Sassuolo was. Um, Raspatori pulls one back, but the ball in the 66 with a really nice thing uh, settles the game. Vital, vital, vital win for Juve. Uh, that just about keeps the hopes, hopes out there. This was really a uh, cannot lose game. Um, and then Torino Milan. I have to say, for the most of the day, uh, even since the Juve game, I thought the Torino game will be much, much harder for Milan than the Juve game uh, because Juve wasn't such bad for me. Torino has actually been doing not that badly, and uh, Nicola, the coach, has been doing quite well with uh, Torino, giving them an identity, making them a team that hard to lose uh, to win against. However, they gave Milan a big present and Milan took it. They, he rotated. Seven changes, no Belotti. At that moment I knew, okay, this is a game that we, Milan just has to win. Uh, I don't care how. And yeah, win they did. Uh, and it was rather, rather convincing. The first half, Milan had most of the control. Theo Hernandez scoring a beautiful goal, but you already saw that the Torino defense was really not there. Literally not there. They gave them a lot of space and Theo Hernandez could pull, uh, pull, pull in, then they get a penalty. I think they also hit the goal. Calabria scored one. Uh, penalty was converted, of course, by Kessie. Um And then, you know, when it was 2-0 and uh, veering towards 3-0 before that, I think Milan also got a little bit uh, in, f uh, you know, uh, it rubbed, uh, the, the laxness of Torino rubbed off and John Nogli played a horror, horrible pass uh, to a suit event, but Bremer just shot straight at Donnarumma. Uh, that, I think, could uh, a little bit have ignited the game again, but right after that, Brahim Diaz makes it 2-0, that's that. And then all hell broke loose, and I have to say, Torino just wanted the game to be over. They didn't put any effort in, they didn't put any yellow cards. I think that Torino on purpose forfeited that game in order to be ready for the big games that are coming up, especially the last game against Ben Benevento, because they have to play Lazio also away from home. I think it's another game. I think they're really, really uh, putting all uh, their eggs into the two important games that they have, namely Spezia away from home, where they can already um, say something, and then ben Benevento at home in the last round. Hernandez. Makes it 4-4-0, uh, really nicely chip chipped over, and then Rebic scores a hat-trick uh, of the craziest sort, um, especially the last goal with his season 79th. It was a beat down of the highest order. Um, and I watched most of it. I think when it was 7-7, I started fl fl flipping around, but you know, I'm usually not the one that goes with games that are already decided. But since it's one of my teams, I decided to stick with it. Maybe I could have seen more games, but it was a really, really... Good evening for Milan. As I said, my nerves uh, regarding Milan's Champions League chances, if we look at the table, are rather calm now. 91%, that looks really, really good, uh, I have to say. Um, we have, of course, Napoli at 7, 75% is not so much. I mean, Juve is just about there. It's still very, very tight up top. But if I look at the schedule, which we'll do, I think that is where it eases my nerves. Benevento, more or less down. I mean, Spezia, Torino, Cagliari, all of them could theoretically go, go down, but, uh, but I think uh, Torino has the game hand that is against Lazio. If they already uh, win against Spezia, that would uh, settle that. I think even a draw for, for them is enough because I'm, I'm, I'm sure the Benevento will pick up uh, the necessary win in Cagliari. Yes, they will play against Milan as, 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 as we see, but with five points also looking rather safe. Uh, expect it. It is that the current standing, the current four uh, will most likely make it into the top four. Um, uh, Inter, Atalanta, Milan, Napoli with Juve on the outside low, low walking in. Juve also has a cup final, as does Atalanta. That's another thing that might uh, factor into the whole thing. Lazio uh, will sixth and Roma only seventh, but uh, since Atalanta and Juve play the cup final, a seventh spot might open up um, for Roma to make it in the Europa League where Sassuolo Pro will not make it in. And I already said so much about the upcoming round. We have Juve Inter. Uh, kind of a big game, I have to say, in Italy anyway. 
And now I think Inter probably could put the nail into you with Coffin. Roma Lazio, that game is never boring. And I said it before, this might be the best looking derby in all of football. Uh, Fiorentina Napoli, um, deceiving game. And as I said, Milan Cagliari, Benevento Crotone. That is a must win for ben ben Benevento, but I'm not sure if they have it in them at the moment. And yes, I forgot about the game that's happening tonight between Crotone and Verona, but you know, uh, that has not much uh, bearing for the table. So yeah, let me know what you thought about this round. I think as far as seven nils go, I, I think I, this is one. I take the result, but I don't put too much in there because Torino just didn't show up. That's why. I, personal opinion. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!